Hey guys, this is Steve Disher from ISP Supplies and LearnMicrotech.com. And today's video, we're going to show you uh, so something fairly simplistic, but nevertheless something with a lot of value, especially to new users in Router OS. And what we're going to do is look at uh, the configuration, the default configuration of a Microtik HAP, which is their small five port router. Uh, this router also has uh, wireless capability. So these routers are very popular for their price point as well as the amount of power that they provide, the full power of router OS in a very small and inexpensive package. So without uh, further ado, I'm going to proceed and we'll go ahead and we'll fire up Winbox. And when we do, we see the router that uh, is in our lab here at 192.168.88.1. And this is a pre-configured router that has some application that it's been configured for. So what we're going to do is reset it to the factory defaults, then go back into the router and look at what the factory default configuration does for us. So to reset the router, we're going to click System and Reset Configuration. And in this case, we're not going to change anything in this window. If we wanted, we could keep the old configuration for users. We could also uh, reboot the router and reset it with no default configuration. Or we could also tell it not to make a backup. One other thing that you can also do from this particular window is that you can run a file that is a, a router OS script file after the router reboots. And that might apply a configuration for you remotely. But that's a bit beyond the scope of what we're doing today. So in this case, we're not going to select any options and we're just going to click Reset Configuration and then we'll select Yes. Okay, we dropped off for a few moments and allowed our router to fully reset. And at this time, it has reset itself and it appears in our neighbor's window with the default IP address. So once again, we're going to log in to the default IP the username is admin with no password, and we'll click connect. The first thing you'll notice that pops up here is the router OS default configuration box. This message window tells you about the default configuration, what's been configured, and so on. So this gives us some great details about how the router was configured. One of the other things we can do here is click the show script button and that would then show us the script that was applied to create that configuration. So we're going to go ahead and uh, exit out of that and we're going to walk through the configuration and show, what, show you what's going on here. So we'll start with uh, the very basics uh, of under IP addressing. So I'll click IP addresses and what you'll notice is that there's a default IP address here 192.168.88.1 on slash 24 and that address is on the bridge interface. I'll leave that open and jump over to the bridge. And here we have our default configuration bridge. On that bridge is a number of ports. And in this case, we have our Ethernet 2 port, which is our master port. And then we have ports 3, 4, and 5 also uh, that are part of this bridge interface. And if we look down uh, here at the bottom of the list, we have our WLAN 1 port, which is our wireless port. So this configuration basically keeps Ethernet 1 as an independent port, and this is the port that you're going to connect to your ISP. That might be a DSL modem, or maybe it's a uh, cable modem. So Ethernet 1, not on the bridge, not part of our local area network group, and it is independent. If I click the Interfaces button, we'll see here is Ethernet 1 and that interface uh, has traffic on it because that is our uplink to our ISP. All right, back to our IP addresses window, and let me show you a quick trick here. If you have uh, quite a few windows open, which I often do, I'll, I'll open a few here. Uh, if you want to close them quickly, just simply hold down the escape key, and those windows all go away. So that's a little uh, trick or tip for you. So back to our IP addresses again, we have our default address on the bridge interface, so that will be for our local area network. And then we notice here that we also have another IP address, which is on our Ethernet 1 interface, our WAN interface. And if you'll notice next to it, there's a letter D. And if you hover over the letter D, it says dynamic, meaning that address was applied dynamically by some type of dynamic process. 
So if we want to see what that process is, we already know that it's DHCP. So I'll click IP DHCP client. And here you see the default configuration puts a DHCP client on the Ethernet 1 interface. So this is our basic connectivity. We have IP address on a bridge interface. That bridge is connected to ports 2, 3, 4, and 5, as well as the wireless uh, interface. And then we have a dynamic IP on a different subnet, of course, and that is on our Ethernet 1 interface. So that is our basic connectivity. Uh, some other things we need to look at, IP routes. You'll notice that we have a default route, and that is installed, again, by the DHCP client, so nothing needs to be added there. You'll also see we have connected routes for the 192.168.88 subnet, which is our, uh, on our bridge interface. And we also have 192.168.89.0, which is on our Ethernet interface. So uh, fairly basic so far. The other things that are created for us in the default configuration would uh, appear under wireless. And we'll double-click the WLAN, double-click the WLAN 1 interface. And here we'll see that the wireless interface is set up as an AP. It is a 2 gigahertz device, so it runs BG or 802.11n protocol. Channel width is variable, either 20 or 40. The uh, frequency that it's running on, that is the channel, is set to automatic. So it will automatically find the channel with the least amount of interference. The SSID is probably something that you're wanting to change because Microtik, B11, blah, blah, uh, is not very uh, personalized or descriptive for the network. So this is actually the first place that we're going to make a change to this basic setup. In this case, I'll call it uh, My Home Wireless Network. And I'll hit OK. All right, back to that interface. There's really not much else that we need to set here for a basic router setup, but we will go ahead and make a change to the country code. This will ensure that the power levels and uh, as well as the channels that we're operating on are in compliance with, in this case, the Federal Communications Commission. So I'll hit uh, the country code there is United States. The frequency mode I will set to regulatory domain. And those are really the only things that I need to set in that particular window. Now, by default, there is no security on the wireless interface. That's a bad situation, as you can probably imagine. So we're going to uh, make sure that we're in the wireless window and the security profiles tab. And here we'll create our own security profile. Now, I really don't recommend leaving WPA security turned on. Instead, you only want WPA2 uh, with pre-shared key or PSK. You want that turned on. So I'll go ahead and put in a key, and I'll hit Apply. My profile is named Profile1. I'll make that more descriptive. I'll call it my WPA2 profile. And now back on my wireless interface window. I'll double click the wireless interface and under security profile I'll set my WPA2 profile. Alright, so quick review. IP addresses, we didn't make any changes. We simply saw what addresses were configured on the router. We also learned that we're receiving one address right now from the DHCP client, which is here, that we have routes that are set up strictly dynamically for us. We have our default route going through our ISP as well as our connected routes for our two subnets that the router knows about. We looked at the bridge interface and that we have ports on the bridge as all part of our local area network 2, 3, 4, and 5 and that WLAN 1 is also on that bridge so that it would participate in the same local area network group. So that's pretty much it for the, the basic configuration. There's probably a couple of more things that you might want to set. The first of those is under system, and it is the name of our system. So in uh, router OS, it's called system identity. And the default here is Microtik. And I'll change this to something more descriptive. And once that's been changed, you'll see at places like the terminal, You'll see it here on the command line. Also, you'll see it up at the top of Winbox here. 
And another place that you might see it is in Winbox when you're looking at your neighbors. You'll see the identity of your router there. All right, so we have basic connectivity in place. We have a working wireless network. We have IP addressing uh, just using the default settings. The last thing to look at is the firewall. So by default, under IP firewall, Microtik has filter rules in place. And the uh, idea of the filter rules is to protect the router from unauthorized access. In the right-hand corner, you'll see a selector. I'm going to set this to the input chain. Now, if you've done much studying on router OS, you'll understand that the input chain is uh, going to influence all packets that are going to the router itself. So let's take a look at these three rules, the default rules, and see what each of them does. The first one says uh, that it's going to accept ICMP. This simply allows your router on the input chain to respond to ICMP requests or ping requests. That allows people to ping your router. The second one says allow established and related connections. Now, if you've read my book, Router OS by example, either first or second edition, you'll understand that connections have various states that they are in uh, in the connection tracking table and, and in respect to the, what the router sees. So established and related connections on the input chain are definitely something we want to allow. Uh, they're not going to cause us any kind of uh, security issues, but it's something we need to allow so that the router can do things like uh, get DNS resolution. Uh, it can do things like um, fetch files, get files from other devices. So by default that is turned on and that's something we're going to leave. The last rule is going to drop everything coming in the Ethernet 1 interface, which is our WAN interface. So again, that rule, the matchers are input chain, in interface is Ethernet 1 with an action of drop. So three very basic rules. If you want to disable this first rule, you absolutely can, and you're not going to hurt anything. Uh, you'll still be able to ping from the router, okay? because pings are going to reply to you on these two connection states. Uh, actually one connection state, the established connection state. So you don't need this rule uh, for anything other than to allow other hosts on your network to ping your router. So I typically disable that particular rule because it's really not needed and face it, uh, hackers are going to ping devices to see if they're alive before they begin to attack them. So disabling this one rule is not a bad thing. Uh, they simply put it in there for your convenience. Then we look at the uh, forward rules. This first one is a dummy rule. This is simply used to create statistics for router OS for fast track and to understand how much traffic might be passing through fast track. Fast track is another complete subject and I invite you to look at the wiki uh, to learn more about fast track. In my opinion, not a lot of value for fast track in a small router that's connected to a 30 or 40 megabit or even a 100 megabit connection because the router certainly has plenty of CPU power to run that much bandwidth without the uh, help of fast track. The next rule we'll look at in the forward chain allows established and related connections. The next one specifically drops invalid connections. And then the last one is going to drop any new connections that are coming in the external interface. So what this would uh, involve is if you had public IPs on your LAN side of your network, and if someone wanted to open a new connection through Ethernet 1 to a host inside your network, that particular uh, rule would then be applied. And then finally, we'll look over here at the NAT tab. There's one rule that's in, included by default, and that rule is going to source NAT, that is change the source address of all packets going out Ethernet 1 using an action of masquerade. So that rule is absolutely important for us in order to use uh, private addresses on our local area network. And if we disable that rule, and if we restart our ping, we will not be able to use our local area network. So that rule just simply ensures that we can use private addresses on the local area network.
If we were to launch a command prompt and start a ping from our local area network out to the internet, we have notice we have pings going right now. But if we disable that rule, our pings are going to stop because now our packets are leaving the router with our 192.168.88 addresses and they're being dropped upstream because no one has a route back to that subnet. So if we uh, re-enable that rule, then our pings will start back up again. Now, sometimes we have to actually stop the ping and restart it, as you see I had to do here. Uh, that's completely normal and nothing to worry about. All right, so that's pretty much it. Uh, I've walked you through the basic default configuration of router OS, the way these little devices come out of the box. And again, the only real change that we made to our particular device was to go into the wireless button, double click the wireless interface, and we made a change to the SSID so the network we're advertising is personalized for our network. And then over on security profiles, we created a new security profile for only WPA2. We put in a pre-shared key, and then back on the wireless interface, we set the security profile to the one we created and we hit OK. That is it. Uh, on top of that, we also set the system identity to make things a little more descriptive. Uh, and then the, finally, the last thing that we should do before we connect this router and call it done is go in and set up a password for the admin user. So now if I click System Users and I double click my admin user, I can set his password here. So I'll put in a password. Hit OK, and that's it. So thanks for joining us today. Hopefully this has shown some light upon Router OS and the default configuration that comes on these devices when you buy them from your favorite distributor. Uh, my name's Steve Disher, and uh, if you would, check out our websites, ispsupplies.com as well as learnmicrotech.com. We also have YouTube channels under the same name with uh, more tutorials like this. So thanks for joining us and have a great day.